Greetings and welcome to this how-to video on debugging a .NET extension in your OutSystems application. An extension in the OutSystems parlance is a component written in .NET and C-Sharp. It provides additional functionality to your OutSystems application. Typically, the functionality is exposed as actions within your application, and it's used to supplement functionality that the OutSystems platform provides. But sometimes, these, these extensions might not work exactly the way you planned, so that's where debugging comes in. I just want to give a shout out to a forum post that inspired this video. It's a great how-to. I'll include a link in the show notes, and uh, you can take a look at that. But I also thought that sometimes uh, showing is as good as telling, so let's take a look. Before we get started, the things that you'll need to successfully complete debugging in your OutSystems extensions is you need to have access to the OutSystems development server. So this is a procedure really for on-prem or self-managed installations only. It won't work uh, when you're in the cloud. Also, you need to have Visual Studio installed on the development server, and you need to have administrator access, and you'll see why that is here shortly. So the things that you'll learn in this video is, first of all, we'll walk through how to create a .NET extension using Integration Studio. You'll see how to configure debugging, both in the OutSystems and the Visual Studio environment, and how to deploy and debug your extension once you've created it. So let's get started. I've opened Integration Studio, the OutSystems tool for creating extensions, and before I get started creating an extension, I want to go ahead and take a look at the options, and specifically the compiler options for .NET. And in this case, I want to make sure that the configuration is set to debug. The default is release, which is great when you're releasing a component. But if you wanted to be able to debug an extension, you'll need to switch this configuration to debug. Just make sure that you turn it back to release and republish your component when you're finished debugging. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to create a new extension. And when I create the new extension, it's going to ask me to log into my environment. I'm running on a local VM, so I'll just log into localhost here. And we'll get started with our extension. Now I'm going to keep things really simple, and I'm going to create an extension that will simply reverse the order of the characters in a string. So I'm going to call that Strawcab, or backwards, backwards of course, and I'm just going to add a single action, and I'm going to call that action Reverse Me. And we'll make sure that we actually spell that correctly. Now, in an OutSystems extension, really what we need is input parameters and output parameters. Um, and anything else that we need uh, to specify what we're going to do with this application. So I'm going to want a uh, text in input parameter, and then I'm going to want a text out output parameter. And to change this to an output parameter, I just simply need to double click here, and that'll change it to output. And I'm going to make both of these mandatory. And we'll just provide a description here. Now that we've got this available, we want to go ahead and uh, edit the source code for the .NET application. So I'll go ahead and save a copy of this locally. And we're going to save this in the EXIF format. So that's just a, an OutSystems uh, extension file. And we'll go ahead and open up the source code. So it's going to open up Visual Studio for me. And while I'm waiting for that to open, I'm just going to go grab a little snippet of source code that I'm going to use here. And I'm going to open up the class file that contains the, the functionality that I want to create. And you can see we've got the reverse me function, which where I'm going to implement my uh, action. And I'm just going to paste in a little snippet of uh, link code. So that's just going to uh, grab the text that's coming in, 
reorder its characters, and then write that back out to an array. All right, so now we should be able to build this successfully. And we're good to go. Now, that's great so far as it goes, but we want to make sure that we have actually got a reference to our, or that we actually output our debug file for this project. So in order to do that, what we're going to want to do is uh, go in and show all the files. And we can see here in the bin folder, we have this PDB file. And this PDB file has the debug symbols that we'll need to debug our DLL. So we're going to right click, we're going to include this in the project, um, and we're good to go for that uh, configuration. Now for right now, we're done with Visual Studio. We'll come back to Visual Studio in just a second here. So now we're back in Integration Studio, and our next step is to publish our extension. So we'll go ahead and click the one-click Publish button. It's going to go ahead and update the source code, compile, save, and upload the extension and publish it to my in development environment. So we see now that the extension was successfully published, and we're good to go to use this extension in an application. So we'll go ahead and close that, and we're going to switch over to Service Studio. We'll go ahead and create a new application. We'll just call this application, I think something like, uh, let's call it Reverser. Okay, and we'll just stick with red for the color, create the app, and open up the module. And once we're here, we'll just create a simple screen. Call this hello. And then for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use a preparation. And we'll go ahead and add our extension as a dependency in our project. There's our extension. There's its reverse me action. Go ahead and click OK. Now we can just jump over to the logic tab. Here's our extension. We'll drag the action over into our preparation and provide us some text in. So we'll go with the uh, hello world, ubiquitous, and we're good to go there. Now if we go back to our screen, simply take an expression, drag it on here, and set the value to text out from reverse me. Click OK. And let's go ahead and publish our application itself. Now, of course, as with any other OutSystems application, if we wanted to debug the preparation, we can just simply come in and add a breakpoint inside the reverse me uh, or inside the preparation on the reverse me call. So pretty straightforward there. We can start debugging, and as soon as we're finished with the publish, we should be able to easily go visit this page and hit the breakpoint. So once our deployment is complete, we've published our application. We can go ahead and open our application in the browser. And we'll see our reversed Hello World string. Now again, if we want to test this in debug, we can just come in to the debugger tab, start debugging. And now I can jump back over to the browser, refresh our screen, and you'll see we hit our breakpoint. We can look at our local values, etc. All of the things that you'd expect to be able to do. But how do we get from here into our .NET code? Well, that's our next step. 
In order to debug our .NET extension, we're going to need to be able to access the process in which it's running, which happens to be the IIS or W3WP process. So in Visual Studio, one of the things that we're going to need to be doing is running as administrator. So really important that you be running as administrator to do this work. So I'm going to jump into the debug menu and click attach to process. And then I'm going to scroll down until I find the W3WP process. Note that you'll have to have the show processes from all users checkbox checked in order for this to work. I'm going to go ahead and attach to that process. And then if it isn't already, you want to also open the modules window from your debug menu. Mine's already open, but you can go to debug windows and modules to open that up. And it'll take a minute for that to load. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint on my line of code where I'm reversing my string. So we can take a look here and we want to make sure that our application module has been loaded here. And we should find uh, I can actually just search. That would probably be easier. And we can see here's our DLL. So yes, the symbols are loaded. We should be good to go and able to debug into our application. So now we're basically waiting for the debugger to hit our breakpoint. We can jump back over to our screen here and refresh and we'll see that Visual Studio has hit our breakpoint. So we can see that our output variable is currently uh, just an empty string. We can see that our input variable is hello world which is set from our OutSystems application and if we step over this particular line here now we can see that our output uh, that our output will be set to the reversed string and if we continue, we go back to our browser, and we should render the desired value here. Now, just to prove to you that we're actually hitting the uh, correct code and getting what we, what we expect, um, let's go ahead and run through this again. We hit the breakpoint again. I'm going to go ahead and hit F10 to step over here. Um, but now what I'm going to do is um, take our text out and I'm going to change this to um, modified and let that change um, let that change go through there and we'll go ahead and continue and now we should see that the modified value has made it back to our application so pretty straightforward uh, you just need to attach to the uh, W3WP process, set a breakpoint in your .NET code, and you can actually step directly from your OutSystems application code into .NET code, inspect all of the variables and locals and set watches and do all of the things that you expect to be able to do in debugging a .NET application uh, directly from your OutSystems application. So in this how-to video, you saw how to create a .NET extension using Integration Studio, how to configure Integration Studio and Visual Studio for debugging your .NET extensions, and how to deploy and debug your extension on your development server. I hope you found that useful, and uh, thank you for watching.